Hello, everyone. I'm Tomoki Nakamaru from the University of Tokyo. Today, I would like to talk about our recent research, an empirical study of method chaining in Java. Let's begin from the background of our study. Method chaining is a programming style in which multiple method invocations are chained in a single expression, as shown in the right top figure of this slide. Method chaining is often promoted as a good practice that improves the readability of source code. Why does it improve the readability? There are several answers to this question. One blog post says that method chaining eliminates redundant temporary variables and saves programmers from keeping many names in their mind. In the case of our example here, the temporary variable A does not appear in the method chaining style. Another post said that, since method chaining groups invocations into a single expression, it is easier to understand the structure of source code than just arranging invocations in parallel. However, there are also negative opinions on method chaining. We listed the negative opinions we found in a stack overflow thread that discusses about method chaining. In that thread, one said that method chaining makes code less readable. This is the opposite opinion of method chaining promoters. Another post said that method chaining violates the law of Demeter, which is a guideline for developing loosely coupled software. We will not discuss the rest of them, but looking at those various comments on Stack Overflow, method chaining does not seem to be widely accepted in the real world, while some promote method chaining as a good practice. The controversy so far leads us to our first question. Is method chaining a programming style accepted by the real world programmers? As we have seen earlier, there are both positive and negative opinions to this question. But the number of Stack Overflow answers and the blog posts are small, so it will be inappropriate to call those material as empirical evidence. In academic papers, the popularity or acceptance is often claimed in the introductory sections, but it is claimed without empirical evidence. Finding the empirical evidence is not only interesting, but also important to strengthen the ground of those existing papers. To answer our question, we mined approximately 3,000 Java repositories and analyzed historical trends in the frequency of method chaining. If we observe the increasing frequency, then such results can be viewed as supportive evidence for the wide acceptance of method chaining because the frequency will be the same or decreasing over time if the majority of real-world programmers consider method chaining as a bad practice. As we mentioned just before, we measure the frequency of method chaining in source code, so we need a frequency indicator. We use the indicator R, the ratio of method invocation in chains, over all the method invocation. For example, the code piece here contains four method invocations, add, stream, for each, and print ln, four invocations in total. And two of them, stream and for each, are part of a chain. So in this case, the value of r is 2 over 4, which is 0 0.5. Obviously, the higher r value indicates more chains appear in source code and the lower R value indicates less chains appear in source code. The dataset we use is a set of Java files that are extracted from the year-end revisions of most star Java repositories on GitHub. The figure shown here illustrates how we built our dataset. To build our dataset, we first cloned approximately 2,800 repositories. And then 
checked out the year-end revisions of each repository. Finally, we extracted all the Java files in those year-end revisions of all repositories. Now we defined how to compute the frequency and obtain the dataset. So let's start analyzing the historical trends. We computed the frequency R for a subset of a dataset, where each subset contains Java files of a specific revision of a specific repository. So we obtain a number of R values. To see the historical trends, we first grouped the R values by year and plotted the histogram of each group. However, it is hard to discuss the trends just by looking at these histograms, so we observed the changes in the quartiles of those groups. This chart shows the changes in the quartiles. As we can see, the frequency is growing in all the quartiles. The first quartile increased from 0.09 to 0.11. The second quartile increased from 0.14 to 0.18, and the third quartile increased from 0.19 to 0.27. These results indicate that method chaining is increasingly used in most repositories. However, we also found that the amount of the changes is larger in the third quartiles compared to the first quartile. This indicates that there is a large bias in the increases. That is, a repository with more chains tends to grow its R value rapidly, and a repository with few chains tends to grow the value slowly. We will stop showing our results at this point since we don't have enough time to show all of our results. But we have measured the frequency with other indicators and discussed about the results more deeply. Further, our study is not just a bean counting. The paper includes our manual inspections of method chaining for better understanding of the trends. We are glad if you read our paper for further information. The most important future work is to conduct interview or user study with real-world programmers. Because our results only show the increasing frequency, but the results does not clearly mean that programmers accept method chaining. Some programmers would write method chains to follow the programming style adopted in their team, even if they don't like method chaining. Our results are supportive evidence for the wider acceptance, but user interview is required to confirm that. From the next slide, we would like to move on to our second research question. As we have seen so far, method chaining is increasingly used in many repositories. Our next question is that, what can language developers do to support such trends? To answer this question, we conducted manual inspections on method invocations and discovered code patterns that are not in the method chaining style, but that can be converted into that style if Java has certain language features. For manual inspection, we randomly sampled 385 method invocations because it was impossible to manually inspect millions of invocations in your dataset. In the rest of the presentation, we introduced two patterns we identified in your dataset. The first pattern is one that we named null exception avoidance, which contains null checking before chaining a method invocation as shown in the right top figure of this slide. We found nine invocations of this pattern in randomly sampled 385 invocations, and from this result, we can statistically estimate the ratio in the population, that is, the entire dataset. The number here, 2.34% plus minus 1.51%, 
show the ratio in the entire dataset at 95% level of confidence. This code plan can be written in the method chaining style with the safe code syntax in Kotlin, which returns null instead of invoking method when the receiver is null, as shown in the left bottom figure of this slide. So, if Java has the safe code syntax like Kotlin, approximately 2% of method invocations can be converted into the method chaining style which is more compact and will be more readable for the majority of programmers. As a side note, newly born languages such as Swift and TypeScript often have similar syntax called optional chaining syntax. Another pattern we found is one that we named repeated receiver, a pattern that invokes multiple methods on the same object as shown in the right of figure in this slide. We found 33 invocations of this pattern, which is approximately 8% of the invocations. This pattern can be converted into the chaining style if Java has the method cascading syntax like small talk and that. The red bottom figure uses the dot-like syntax to cascade method invocations. In addition to the two patterns we have described, we identified two more patterns in the randomly sampled invocations. We won't describe those two, but in total, 15% of invocations can be converted into chain if Java has language features such as the safe code syntax. Important future work is, again, the interview to real-world programmers, especially language developers. We discovered that 15% of invocations can be converted into chains by introducing new language features to Java, which would be more readable for many programmers, but the disadvantage of those language features are not investigated in our study. So the interview is required to discuss the pros and cons of those features. So conclusion, we have found supportive evidence for the wide acceptance of method chaining. This evidence will motivate further study of method chaining and it also strengthens the basis of the existing work on method chaining. We also discovered what language feature will be helpful to support the increasing trends in method chaining and estimated the impact of the introduction of those language features. Since we couldn't show all of our results in this presentation, we would appreciate it if you take a look at our paper for more information. Two kinds of our user interviews are left for future work of this study. One is for confirming the acceptance of method chaining and the other is for discovering pros and cons of language features that support method chaining style. That's all. Thank you for listening.